guys? It's Q Coach Shay here, and today we are talking about my favorite, everything squats, specifically squat progressions and regressions. And I know what you're thinking when I just said that. I don't ever want to regress. I want to progress, right? But sometimes you got to take a few steps back, and go back to the basics before you take that big leap forward. Because here are the facts. It's a competitive world out there in the fitness industry and it's hard to get your attention. So all of us trainers and instructors are trying to come up with the coolest moves with the coolest names and the coolest patterns and the coolest classes to get you off the couch and come work out with us. Well, it's working, but unfortunately, and I hate to burst your bubbles out there, not all of you are ready for all that crazy stuff. And when classes start to get popular, and it goes from 20, 30, 40, 50 plus people, it gets harder and harder for us to give you the individual attention that you need. So if you're not working one-on-one -on -one with a trainer, I want to arm you with a little bit of information so you can take care of yourself. You don't feel like you have to tap out or back out or give up. Cool? All right. So we're gonna start from the top, the kind of stuff that you see in all those cool classes today and all those little Instagram videos. Squat jumps, right? They look a little like this. Everybody's seen this, and people do them differently. I like to drive my elbows back so I keep my chest up, my core engaged, and it gives me a little bit more momentum, right? Up off the floor, and there's a hundred variations of this. You can do squat to one knee up, squat to tuck jump, and all kinds of cool stuff. 360 jumps. Um, there's one look that looks like this. People give them cool names, like alien squats, right? But before you can do that, you want to make sure that you've mastered the squat and you can land properly so you don't injure yourself. All kinds of fun stuff. The next one is sprawls and burpees. And those are two different things and people, again, give them cool names. So this is what you want to look for. A sprawl is basically a squat to a plank. So you would come down, I'm going to do it slow. You would come all the way down. Now your hips have to break 90 degrees. Hands have to come on the floor with the chest up, eyes forward. So I see a lot of this, I see a lot of this, I see a lot of this, right? It's gotta come all the way down here, hands on the floor, and then you shoot your feet back. A modification is to walk the feet back and walk them up. And then sometimes there's a jump at the top or a clap at the top. And then sometimes it's thrown in with some other combinations, some other exercises. A sprawl or a burpee is different. Same thing, come all the way down, but then you wanna keep most of the weight in your legs, back in the heels, in your core. Hands are here for stability, and you kinda of just let go, right? So your belly hits the floor. It's not a push-up. If you start relying on your arms, they're gonna fatigue super, super quick, and you're not gonna be able to do this as well. From here, you gotta use your whole body to push up back to that squat, and again, there's often a jump or something at the top. Now, before you do any of these moves, there's a couple things you have to master. Planks, we did that the other day, so you can go watch my video. Squats, we're doing that today. You gotta be able to do a push-up, you gotta have the upper body strength. So before you just throw yourself into one of these exercises, make sure you've done a little homework. Make sure you've done them slowly on your own and go at your own pace. If you see everybody hitting it and they're doing 50 burpees, good for them. If you can't do it, but you can only do three to five well, that's even better, all right? So those are just some of the things that we start to see. Before we get there, I wanna talk about a proper squat. There's a couple different foot positions and I got bare feet on today so that you can see. There's the narrow parallel, toes forward. This is probably the hardest because you have a narrow base. Abs in tight, you wanna send your hips back, weight in the heels, chest up, eyes forward. So you wanna make sure that you can at least get to 90 degrees. What do you need to get to 90 degrees? You need mobility, flexibility in your ligaments and your joints, most specifically your ankles and your hips. So here's a little science. If you take care of your feet and your ankles and your hips, your knee will, fo will follow. This is a dumb joint. It was not made very well. And the most common injury is knee injury. And I see a lot of people squatting, pushing the kneecaps forward over the toes with the heels lifting because they're tight up through their posterior chain. That means the back side of your body. So tendons are tight, ankles here, calves might be tight, lower back and hamstrings might be tight. So you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta work on your flexibility, your mobility, so that you can move with ease through this movement pattern, right? That's a whole other video. We've got some great stretching videos on here. Ariel, I know, does great stretching videos, so go check her out. 
get a little more flexible, and then work on your form with these squats here. All right, from there, once you've mastered the squat, then you can start adding variations. Kickbacks, knee ups, and you can add load. That means weight. For instance, if this was a bar, you might take it and put it up behind your back. It rests at the top of your shoulders. Chest up, same thing. And this is a broomstick. This is a broomstick. <laughs> um, so if you have one of these in your house, this is a great way to practice. So chest up, shoulders wide, abs in tight. If you can do this without bending forward or collapsing in the upper back, you might be ready to add some weight. And then you increase it as you get better. Do not add more weight until you've mastered the body weight squat and start light, right? And do not progress to the next level until you've mastered the level you're on. Another way to give yourself an assessment to see if you squat properly is to take this same broomstick or dowel Take it behind you, grip it like so. You want it to touch the back of your head and your tailbone. There should be a slight curvature in your lower back. You want a neutral spine. So not this, and not really this. You don't want to tuck your tailbone all the way under. Right from here, and you want to stand in front of a mirror where you can see yourself. You want to be able to lower all the way down, right, without collapsing forward, without this, and without that, which is hard for me to do, but a lot of people have this, right? So you want to work on that. Ways to improve that form are actually to work on your core, right? So squatting isn't just about the legs. Again, you want to work on the flexibility, mobility in the joints, strength in the core, upper back, and you'll start to see improvements right away. Now, if you've got an injury, perhaps you're a little older, something that prohibits you from bending all the way down at the knees, you may never be a good squatter. Makes me sad because I love squats, but life isn't over for you yet. There are plenty of other options that you can do to build power in your glutes and get a total body exercise. So don't just give up, choose another option. A lot of people don't know this, but if you can't squat, and there are a lot of non-squatters out there, a deadlift is a perfect option. Now, a deadlift means that you're picking up weight dead off the floor. So a lot of exercises you get momentum from here, right? You get that full range. Now I don't have weight, I have the bar, and this is what you're gonna practice with first. Feet about hips distance apart or maybe a little wider. There's also an option to do a sumo deadlift. We're not gonna talk about that today. Roll your shoulders back, you want your scapula to depress, which means your shoulder blades, your little wings in your upper back come together. Abs in tight. You're gonna bend your knees slightly and come all the way forward. You wanna sort of shave your legs. So when you come up, and you definitely wanna practice with a bar because, or, or a pole like this, because uh, a lot of people get bloody shins and throw their backs out. Don't wanna scare you, but it's true. Keep that chest up, shoulders back, erectors tight, lower back, and then you're gonna come all the way up. This is the drive. Drive means you're pushing through your heels and pushing your hips forward, glutes engaged. That is super, super important. That lock at the top, you want those shoulders back. Squeeze your butt and push it forward so that your, the front of your thighs hits the bar. And just practice that. Now, if you've never done this before, you're gonna start to feel this in your glutes and your hamstrings without any weight. After a while, it's gonna get easy, so you're gonna have to add some weight. But this is a great total body exercise. Glutes, hamstrings, lats. Whoo, right? Looks like that. So that's your option if you can't squat. And if you're in a group fitness class where everybody's jumping around, you don't even need the bar. Do a couple of these, really, really squeeze tight, lock it at the top. Maybe throw in some jumping jacks or something that's familiar to you to get your heart rate up. Again, it's not gonna skyrocket as high, but you're gonna protect yourself and you'll be able to push through longer and when you finally can do it, you're gonna crush it. Last, last option. And this is where most people should start. You're gonna come down to the floor to a bridge pose. So you want your feet about inner hips distance apart, not too far. Roll down. And we've all seen this before. We're like, yeah, this is a great booty toning exercise. But it's also an awesome option if you can't squat because it's basically the same movement pattern. A lot of people don't think about that. So from here, there's a couple ways to do it. Palms just flat by your side. I like to engage the upper back. This helps strengthen it for when you're going to squat and add load and also for deadlifts. 
So you want to lift up your back, squeeze your shoulder blades together and push it back down into the floor. Pull your belly button in, walk your feet in close, and then you want to push your hips up. So drive up. You're going to have to do quite a few of these in order to start to feel it, but that's okay. So you just come to the top, you squeeze your glutes, hips come up. Don't overextend, not necessary, right? Once you get good at this, again, add variations. You can do it with one leg. So now you're working on stability, balance, core, right? And strength on one leg. And there's all kinds of options you can do here. You'll see a lot of them, but make sure you master this first. You can also start to load it up from the hip. So you would take a bar with uh, the appropriate amount of weight and then you'd get a little extra action. So this is a great option if you're not a very good squatter, but you want to build power and carve out your glutes, all right? I could probably go on for an hour and a half about this, guys. This is just a little taste. I hope this encourages you to do some more research and education on your own. I hope this encourages you to reach out to us and me at kinetic.com. We're always here for you. Remember to be safe. It's form first. Mobility, stability, then you go for power and strength and all that other stuff when you've mastered it. Take care of yourself, guys. One more thing. Tweet me after this, hashtag AskShay, S-H-A-Y. Send me a picture of you squatting. If you can't really do the assessment yourself, I'll do it for you. Happy to do that today. Tune back in in just a few minutes. I'm going through a quick hit workout and I'm gonna incorporate some of these moves. So uh, practice a little bit and I'll see you in a minute. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time at kinetic.com.